Hello everybody, welcome to this video. If you're new here, my name is Selena. I'm an actress and I primarily make acting related content here on YouTube. If you're not new here, thank you so much for returning. Welcome back, it's great to see you. Now, before we jump into the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it. Now, for those of you who don't already know, I am currently represented by a bicoastal management company. And if you're not sure what I mean by bicoastal representation, it just means that you have a rep that represents you in both the LA and New York markets. However, I've been wanting to expand my team for a while now and bring an agent on board. And I did recently have an agent meeting and I'm excited to share that they did offer me representation after the meeting. I mean, not right after the meeting you know they take some time to talk about you and deliberate and you know depending on the agency that could take a couple days it could take a week you know it just kind of depends they'll usually kind of let you know but yes in this case after they talked about me and decided that i would be a good fit for their roster i got a phone call that said they wanted to offer me representation and i was super excited and i will definitely be proceeding with them however at this point i'm not going to tell you who the agency is just because i haven't officially signed the contract yet i still have to get all the paperwork and review it and make sure it's all good before you know signing all of the necessary documents so since it's not official on paper yet i'm not going to tell you who the agency is at this point however i will say that they are a dallas-based talent agency because i did just move to the dallas area a little over a month ago now and in my previous video i talked about how my husband and i moved from long beach california to dallas texas so feel free to check that video out if you're interested and haven't done so already but i was like well now that i'm in dallas it probably would be smart of me to get an agent that covers the texas market and the surrounding regions of texas and that's what this agency does so i i'm really fortunate to have uh, representation that covers some of the southern regions of the U.S. as well. Because at this point I've had meetings with different managers and agents, I figured I would make a video talking about how to prep for an agent meeting or manager meeting for that matter and what to expect in these meetings. So first things first, if it's a virtual meeting, which it probably will be, Actually, to be honest, I don't think I've ever had an in-person agent or manager meeting ever, which is crazy. I've always met with them virtually, either over like Zoom or Google Meets or something. Um, but anyway, if it's a virtual meeting, I simply just like to use my self-tape setup. So that means having good lighting, so either a ring light or some box lights, making sure that um, you have your laptop or desktop set up, and uh, obviously you want clear audio available to you on either your laptop or desktop, and you wanna make sure you have strong internet connection, right? And then for my backdrop, I like to just use Actually, you can kind of see at the corner of my screen here, I have this blue backdrop. Um, it's one of those pop-up backdrops where one side is blue and one side is gray. That's what I like to use for my meetings. If you don't have a backdrop like that, you can just sit up against a plain solid wall and that's totally fine as well. So I just simply like to use my self-tape setup. I think it makes you look the most professional and I especially think that it works to your advantage if the agent or manager has asked you to bring a monologue for the meeting and they want you to perform that monologue live during the meeting. I think having your self-tape set up makes you look like you're audition ready, which is what you want them to think, right? You want them to understand that you are ready to work right now. Now, obviously, if you have a meeting and you don't have a plain backdrop, let's say your back background is like this, you're just sort of like sitting at your desk and you can see the rest of the room in the background, it's not the end of the world for these meetings. I guess it's not as important if you're just having a meeting in order to get to know one another and have a discussion. I've had plenty of meetings with agents and managers where they did not ask me to perform live whatsoever. They just wanted to get to know me. They asked me different questions about who I am as a person and my goals and whatnot. And then I got to ask them questions. So it was essentially just a chat, right? To see what kind of rapport we have with each other and, to, and for them to see if I'm gonna be a good fit for their roster and for me to see if I wanna work with them as well. So I guess if it's a meeting where you don't have to do any kind of live performance, it probably is not as important to have like, you know, kind of a plain um, background. But for me, I just always like to have that 
um, it's just my personal preference, if you will. Um, so for the thing is for some agents and managers, when they don't ask you to perform live, what usually happens is after that first introductory call where they kind of go over how they operate their business and you know, you, you tell them a little bit about yourself and they're like, okay, I'm interested in you. And so if they're interested in you, what they'll do is after the call is done, they'll send you an email requesting a self tape audition and they'll send you a specific set of instructions that tells you this is how you have to film your audition. This is how you have to label your file. Sometimes they'll provide you with a scene. Sometimes they'll tell you to bring in a scene of your choice. And they might say, you know, bring in a scene that's no more in two pages in length, for instance. So that can happen as well. As far as um, having monologues ready. So like I said, sometimes they ask you to perform live. And when that's the case, the agent or manager will email you beforehand and say, Hey, um, during the meeting, like we want you to perform this monologue or bring in a monologue of your choice. So they'll give you warning. I've never had a situation where I've entered an agent or manager meeting and they're just like, surprise, can you like just perform for us right now? Like no, no warning at all. Um, in order to avoid getting caught, just as a precaution, I would recommend that you always have one dramatic monologue and one comedic monologue in your back pocket. And I recommend that your monologues are pretty short, maybe no more than one to two minutes in length. So sometimes when agents do ask you to perform a monologue, they won't give you a time limit, but I always say like, keep it to one to two minutes because after two minutes, people tend to like, get bored <laughs> and the attention span starts going down. It's, it's sad, but true. You'd rather them want more from you than be like, oh my God, when is she gonna stop? You know, like, so I always say one to two minutes is good, uh, regardless of whether or not they give you a time limit. And some, some agents and managers will specifically say like, no more than one minute. But anyway, just in case whenever you enter an agent or manager meeting, even if they don't ask you to perform live in any emails prior to the meeting, just have a monologue, a dramatic monologue, comedic monologue ready to go that you know well, that showcases you in the best light and just have that just in case you're not completely unprepared. Another thing to note as well is that some agents and managers might say, beforehand, hey, during the meeting, we're gonna give you cold copy, so just be, pre be prepared that you're gonna be doing some cold reading. I'm sure there have been cases where once again, you go to a meeting, you have no idea, and the agent or manager might be like, you know what, I'm gonna give you some cold copy, I want you to do it right now. Usually with cold copy, you'll get a few minutes to look it over, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes, it just really depends. Um, but I would say prior to any agent or manager meetings, just make sure your cold reading techniques are brushed up upon, if you will. Um, it's, it's useful to have and I think a lot of reps want to make sure that you know how to do cold reads because sometimes casting does request actors to do a cold read of a scene if they feel like you're a better fit for another character. So just making sure that if you don't know what a cold read is, understanding what a cold read is, uh, learning some techniques or brushing up some cold reading techniques, I think would be really helpful for you as well. Just uh, again, as an added precaution and so that you are completely prepared. It's better to be over prepared, overdo things than be under prepared because I feel like if you're over prepared entering a meeting, once the meeting starts, you're gonna be far less nervous compared to if you just, you know that you didn't quite fully prepare. And the last thing that I like to do is to make sure that I go over the most commonly asked questions that agents and managers like to ask potential clients in a meeting. So I found this great list. I think, I think it's from Career Activate, um, where it's just like a whole list of commonly asked questions. And what I like to do is like to go through this list type out all of my answers and just make sure that I have an answer to every single question on that list. So I'm definitely gonna be sharing with you the different questions that I like to go through. Here are some of the questions that an agent or manager might ask you during a meeting. The first and most dreaded question of them all, tell me about yourself. They might also ask, why did you leave your previous rep? Obviously only answer this question if it's applicable to you. They might ask, what kind of relationships do you have with casting offices? What's your track record like? What kind of roles do you typically get called in for? Or what type of roles do you normally book? 
What's your experience with auditioning for TV, film, and commercials? Why do you want to be an actor? What kind of training have you done or are you currently doing? What kind of day job do you have, if any? What separates you from other actors? What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in five years? Or they might ask you as well, what are your short-term goals? What are your special skills? So there's a whole host of different questions that an agent or manager might ask you. Now, obviously they're not gonna ask you all of these questions in one meeting, but they might ask you a few different things from this list that I'm about to provide. So I'm gonna provide the full list that I like to go through. As I mentioned previously, I believe a lot of these questions came from Career Activate because I did do a course with them a while ago about how to get an agent or manager. However, this is not sponsored and since I can't guarantee anything, I'm not making an official recommendation, but if you'd like, you can check out the course on their website at careeractivate.com. All right, that is all I have for you in today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope it provided you with some level of insight. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try my very best to give a good answer. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. So until next time, bye.